You have a beautiful trine, a grand trine. This is lovely. That's a blessing to have a grand trine. You have uh, so ascendant is in Gemini, Sun is in Aquarius, and you have four planets in Aquarius, which is phenomenal, phenomenal. You have Triquarian, um, Mercury, Venus, Jupiter, and the Sun are all in Aquarius. And your moon is in Pisces, so there's a mixture of air and water. Uh, and Sagittarius, uh, Saturn on your ascendant is going to de define your looks. Your looks will be Saturnian. Now, if you want to know what that means, I recommend this book, guys. This is a great book here. by Judith H. Hill. And if you want to know what it means, because when you're when there's a planet on your ascendant, you know, I have Uranus and Mars on my ascendant, and I can see how that's formed my, you know, my head structure and my body structure. I can see Uranus, you know. It's right there on my ascendant. But Saturn gives you a certain look. Mars gives you a certain look. In fact, they say that uh, people with Mars on the ascendant tend to have reddish hair, and certain features, etc., because of the iron. And you've got to understand, Saturn being on your ascendant, that's lead. That's lead. That's the planet of lead. Heaviness, solidity, stability. You know, Mars is fiery, iron. That's why they are the malefics, because their element is very heavy. Their energy is heavy, whereas Venus is copper. Saturn is tin. These are ethereal elements. That's why they are the, the greater and the lesser benefics. Whereas Mercury is slippery. It's quicksilver, you know. And the sun is gold. The moon is silver. That's why you always look, where is the sun? Because that's where he gives you gold. Where is the moon? That's where she gives you silver. And all the attributes that go with that metal in alchemy. Because wherever they go, they give that particular signature energy. You see? Um, okay, so um, your house, your seventh house is free of all kinds of afflictions. Um, but your eleventh house, which has to do with... Um, your eleventh house, which has to do with uh, friends, is afflicted. So you will have a problem with friends. Secret hopes and wishes. And you have Mars there, which is a malefic uh, thing that might be um, a problem, is uh, 13 degrees of Taurus is, is afflicted. So that has to do with the throat. You need to uh, be wary of this. There's an affliction to the throat. and might have to do with uh, your speaking and not being perhaps a confident speaker or something, but something to do with the throat and breathing and speaking and all those features. That is an affliction. There's a good affliction there by the sun and, uh, and mercury. But that's a very strong affliction in your birth chart. And who am I speaking to? I'm speaking to Song, is it? Yeah. Okay, we'll get used to each other as <laughs> time goes. All right, one more then, and we've got uh, an Aryan Tash. Hello? Yep, I'm here. Everyone hearing me? Yeah, I'm good. Okay. Beautiful Tash. That's <laughs> fantastic. Yep. Let's see what's going on with the fire here. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. But please hop on Skype in the future and we'll do this properly. This is very, you know, but, it, but it's good for you to reflect on these things because um, once you know where your, your ascendant is and your, and your, um, your moon and everything like that, then you, then you can start meditating along, along that and, and, and um, 
building a, a repertoire of knowledge about what it means. What does it mean to have the sun in your head if you're Aryan? What does it mean to have it in your mouth as a Taurian? Well, I can tell you what it means. All the greatest philo- philosophers that ever lived were Taurians because they had the sun in them. Now, Plato, Socrates, like that. I think Karl Marx is, is, was voted one of the, the favourite philosophers of all Americans of all time. Um, and it, and, it, and it is, in fact, I'll, I'll get that. Have a, that's why I recommend this book. He, he, he gives such wonderful snippets of information um, and that in, that information about Taurus really uh, impressed me, where he spoke about all those. Um, okay, a poll among B. This is on page seventy one of this book. He says a poll among BBC Radio Four listeners in the summer of two thousand five found that Britain's favourite philosopher was Karl Marx, Taurian. Runner up was David Hume. And third place was Ludwig Wittgenstein, Immanuel Kant, had the sun in your throat, in your mouth. You're going to be a philosopher, the sun in your head. Well, that means something else. You need to have your sun in Gemini. Well, it means you're going to be very loquacious and you're going to be very bullet with your thinking and you're going to be very, you know, <laughs> you're going to have um, great doubles, mate. <laughs> Um, uh, all of these were born on the sign of the Taurus. In fact, since no one knows the so- birthdays of Socrates and Plato, I can tell you, rest assured, it's um, it's Taurus. He was Taurine. Celsus revealed that in the first century. All right. In fact, since no one knows the birthdays of Aristotle and Saint Thomas Aquinas, only two of the top ten, Karl Popper, Leo, and Friedrich Nietzsche, Libra. We're certainly not born under, ta- under Taurus. But um, here's some interesting facts. Mus Aurelius, 26th of April, great philosopher. Love. Love Marcus Aurelius. John Stuart Mill, 20th of April. Fitz, uh, Kierkegaard, 5th of May. Tom. Thomas Reed, 26th of April. Thomas Aquinas, the dumb ox. So that's what it means. It's great to know these things. I would start with knowing with that now because they are the big boys. They have all the angular momentum in the solar system and they have all the say in your birth chart, really. They're ferocious. One gives you good, one gives you bad. Saturn is known to be a malefic and causes 50% of all the illnesses on the Earth. Keep 1 a.m. Sorry, guys. Trying to do this as quick. 1 a.m. And I think we're going to be winding it up soon anyway. Great. I've enjoyed it. I hope you all have too. Yeah, thanks, Tricia. Yeah, where was that? April 7... Now this thing keeps skipping about. 1984, Albuquerque, New Mexico. Albuquerque. Okay, I got the spelling wrong. Albuquerque. I always put you. I'll be. You know, I've put in, I've punched in the wrong details sometimes, right? Because you just do go back and you do it properly, and then you go, oh, this, that, and this. Oh, yeah, that's me. There's no mistake. There's just no mistake about this. It's just beautiful science. Simple back lane point up. Oh, 
All right, 7th of April, 1984, 1 a.m. Let me just check that again. Uh, 1 a.m. New Mexico. Here we go. Arians. Arians rock. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. okay. Jupiter. Jupiter is right on the ascendant in Capricorn. The, the Jupiterian tin nature. Happy, jovial. Uh, your moon is uh, Gemini. Moon is Gemini, and and your ascendant is Capricorn. So you've got fire, earth, and air. That's a good mixture. Good mixture. Like well balanced, maybe. Yeah. Well, they say that the ancient astrologers say that if you have a mixture. Um, it's better than being, say, a triple Scorpio or a triple whatever, um, but it's good to have one from all the elements, and it's but, it, but it's stronger to have one in each of the elements. For instance, if you had your sun in Sagittarius, your moon in Aries, and your ascendant in Leo, wow, that's strong. That's a, a grand trine, but it's strong in fire. It's not balanced. Balance is, you know... Nices. Um, but in this birth chart here, in this birth chart here, there's a lot going on. I'll need a lot of time for this one. Um, but um, first house is um, you're pretty lucky to have Jupiter in your first. Jovial, happy, strong, magnanimous, um, ethereal. Yeah, it's great. You're, you're lucky. Being an Aryan, you need mm, some of that soft Jupiterian influence. Your uh, second house is pretty much unaffected. That's your house of wealth, so you shouldn't have a problem getting wealth. Um, and Venus is sitting right on the cusp there, so she would, if she was sitting in there, she'd be abs absolutely aiding your house of wealth. But you know, um, your house of illness is afflicted with the moon, so you need to take care of that and your job here is basically to um, be looking after your house of children and pleasure and illness but in particular your fifth house that's where your true north node is which means that's where you need to put effort in your life look for your true north node because that's where and where, whichever house that is it's telling you put effort there. So you need to put effort in the fifth house, and that has to do with pleasure, joy, um, clothes, and children. It's the house of pleasure. Perhaps you need to give yourself more pleasure, you know, more joy and real, true um, enjoyment in life. You're probably depriving yourself of it. Yeah. Um, but you... Mm -hmm. Yeah, your house of friends is interesting. You have Uranus and Mars in there. So that's going to be, uh, um, you know, and they're both retrograding. So um, through how I would interpret that, I'd have to look at that and get back to you. But having Uranus and Mars in your 11th house, which is your house of friends and ambition and triumph and secret hopes, um, I would say there's a little bit of... Um, conflict there and your 10th house is also afflicted with, which is your house of honours you're going to have mixed fortunes there your house of honours and career and profession and anyway that's a pretty superficial <laughs> gloss over alright guys anything else and um, we can pretty much wind it up thank you so much we really appreciate it yeah I think that's enough we can uh, recharge and uh, get back on next week. Uh, for me, I can never stop. You know, I'd stay here all day. You know, if anyone wants to do that, that's what I'd do. But um, I think it's appropriate today that we uh, finish there. And thanks. It really encouraged me. And, um, you know, it's great to have you as friends and young stars on the same, you know, wavelength.